Hello and welcome to the ORCAD X layout tutorial series. In this video, we're going to do something optional in the part placement process, which is setting up DFA rules in ORCAD X layout. Now, generally, when you're placing components in a design, you can take advantage of things like the alignment guides. I'm just going to go ahead and turn them off. There's some basic DRCs that look to make sure that the outlines of the components aren't overlapping. But depending on the manufacturer that you're working with, sometimes parts can only be a certain distance away from each other or else they won't be able to, for example, use a pick and place machine to populate the board. What you can do is set up specific rules which dictate, well, all of my chip parts, which are like these capacitors, can only be 30 mils or 0.75 millimeters away from each other but they need to be, for example, 1.5 or 1.25 millimeters away from plated through hole parts, right? A lot of plated through hole parts might be populated by hand on a board. So they need a little more space as they're also going to be soldered by hand. To do that, what we need to do is set up DFA rules. In the next part placement video, you'll notice that the DFA rules are already turned on. And let's take a look at how to set them up. So first thing we need to do is go into Constraint Manager. We'll go to there with Tools, Constraint Manager. In Constraint Manager, we wanna look at the different worksheets we have available, and we're looking for the Manufacturing Worksheet. And this already happens to be open to the Design for Assembly, Package to Package Spacing section. Now, there's two main sort of sections here. One is the DFA constraint set section and the other one is the design. A constraint set is kind of like a rule that we first need to define before we apply it to, for example, layers in our design. So we need to create a rule for spacing and then apply it to, for example, the top layer of our design. Or if we're working on a rigid flex board, we might want to have a different rule for the ridge part of our design and then a different rule for the flex part of our design. To set up the rule, go into the DFA constraint set section, click on package to package spacing, and then click the blue plus to create a new constraint set. The name doesn't matter so much. There's only one usage, which is spacing. Hit OK. And then you'll notice that this constraint set usage package to package spacing is highlighted in yellow. That basically means that the check right now is turned off in our design. We can turn it on simply by right clicking and selecting analysis mode. And if you click off, you'll notice that it's now gray, which lets us know that this check is now on. Important thing to notice is while this is highlighted or I'm looking at this rule, these values, because our design is in millimeters, need to be in millimeters. So this default of 25 was actually 25 mils. So just keep that in mind when you're setting these values. Below here in this DFA table, what we want to do is populate this with our components. And this 25 colon 25 colon 25 colon 25 format basically means what is the spacing that is allowable for side to side, for end to end, side to end, and end to side of the component pairs. Now there's two ways to do this. One is kind of a brute force method where you name every single footprint in your design in this table and then set the values. Okay, these are all of the available packages in our design. Now what we can do is highlight all of them, add them to the selected packages and select OK. And now we have this really large table where we can define all of the spacings, for example, from a 0603 capacitor to an SOT23 six pin. And we can set that value and go through the rest of the table. But that is quite a quite a long task. What we can do instead is to classify all of these into, for example, chip parts and connector parts or ICs and connectors. And then between those three classifications, set up all the rules. So instead of having, you know, these hundred different cells that we need to edit, we would have six, for example. To quickly do that, let's just go ahead and delete this rule that we started creating, start a new one. And then down here, select show symbol classifications. So these are all of our symbols on the left side. We want to create a DFA package class. We're going to call this chip. Hit OK. We're going to create a new one also called IC. Hit OK. 
And then finally, we're going to call the last one con and PTH, which means connectors and plated terminals. Press OK. To add different components into a class, simply highlight the class. I'm going to highlight chip and then highlight the different footprints which we want to belong to that class. So in this case, it's going to be this 2SMD, this cap, and I'm holding down control to make multiple selections and then using my mouse to click and drag or just click and click multiple options. I believe these are all the selections that I want to put into chip. And then I select this right arrow to add them into the chip class. For IC, I want to select all of these SOT parts as well as my QFN. And I believe that is all of the chip parts to the IC class. And then the connectors and plated through hole parts. You can also left click and then shift to select multiple in a row, add them to the connectors and plated through hole class. Now, once all of these have been classified, go ahead and press OK. And you'll notice we have a much smaller table that we need to deal with. In general, the smallest allowable distance that is okay between my components, I'm going to set is 30 mils or 0.75 millimeters. I can simply click on one of these cells, hit control A to select all of them and start typing 0.75. Now you don't need to follow this exact same syntax if you just want it to set that same 0.75 value for all four of these. Simply press enter and it'll uh, input that value. Now for our connectors, we want to make sure that the connector to IC, the connector to other connector, and the connector to chip are actually a little more strict than 0.75 millimeters. From my experience, a good rule is about 1.25 millimeters. You can go a little bit above that, but 1.25 millimeters we can set by control clicking on these different cells and then typing in 1.25 and that will set those values for us. So now we've set the rule called DFA package constraint set two, and now we need to assign it to our design on the top and bottom layer. To do that in this design section, select packaged package spacing, expand your primary stack up, assembly layers, and then for top and bottom, you can either input the DFA package constraint set two manually for each one, or for the whole assembly layer selection, you can just select DFA package, constraint set two, and it'll assign it for both of them. All right, when you're done, go ahead and just click the red X, and then that should turn on our DFA rule checking. Now we can test this by going into the move command, and let's bring over a couple of these components into our design here. So this footprint here, the capacitor, is one that falls into that chip classification. This SOT236 falls into the IC classification, and then this J4 falls into the connector and plated through hole classification. With the design for assembly rule on, when I start to move these components close to each other, and let me just turn off the alignment guides. Okay, that's turned off. When I start to move these close to each other, You'll notice that these little circles start to appear, which we call bumpers, which will make sure that I don't place the component too close to another one. So you get little DRC markers, and it's basically checking to make sure that I don't violate the DRC. Likewise, I can move this capacitor and you can start to see that those circles appear. Now, depending on your grid, Sometimes you'll get these green circles, which basically stop you from moving the component any closer to the other component. Oh, just like that. And what it's doing is it's moving it to the exact 1.25 millimeter distance between the two parts. Now, what it's actually measuring is the DFA shape that is created on each of these footprints. I'm not going to go into too much detail on that, but if you want to see exactly what the DFA bound is, you can enable or disable this layer or assign a different color to it. So in this case, if 
I turn off all my layers, let's turn on the design outline component keep in and just turn on the DFA bound and assembly. You'll notice that these are the red squares, which it's actually using to measure that distance. with. So as I start to move this part, there's that little green circle. Even though this part has some silk screen at the top, the actual assembly is between this little chip here and this large plated through hole part outlined by this uh, DFA layer. So that is it. In the next video, when I'm doing the placement, we will have this enabled. See you then.